Today I'm yapping about five dudes that are going to blow the lid off of the 2024 fantasy football season, okay? And we're going to start right at the top. We're going to start with my man's Kyler Murray, one of the most electric athletes to step onto a football field in the state of Texas in high school and then in Oklahoma and then the number one overall pick in Arizona. We've forgotten just how good of an athlete and a quarterback that this man is, all right? Now, he's a seventh, eighth, depending on what platform you're drafting on. He's he's anywhere from the quarterback six all the way down to the quarterback 10. Yahoo, ESPN, underdog, whatever, whatever, whatever. Now, last year, obviously, we had no real sample to work off of statistically because he's coming back from the ACL tear. He didn't step onto the field until around week 10. His weapons group is about as well-rounded as he's had since he stepped onto the field in the NFL, okay? Like, D-Hop was obviously an upper-tier weapon, but Marvin Harrison Jr. as a rookie is going to be 75 to 80% of what D-Hop was in the later part of his career in Arizona. Michael Wilson, you know I love me some Michael Wilson. And then we have Trey McBride. So you have three real playmakers in this offense. And yes, I'm putting Michael Wilson as a playmaker in this offense because when you look back at this video a year from now, you will agree with what I just said. Anyways, he's two years removed from the ACL. And I implore y'all not to forget that Kyler Murray on his resume has a 133 carry, 819 rushing yard, 11 rushing touchdown season. He was incredible when he first came into the league for fantasy football. Dude putting up 25, 26 points per game. When you look at the other guys going around him in drafts, that mid-tier of quarterbacks, right? Like Joe Burrow, great arm, great QB, cool pocket passer. Dak Prescott, great arm, very good quarterback, pass-heavy offense, all that kind of stuff. Jordan Love, all of these guys have a really nice floor because they're great quarterbacks. None of them have the upside or the rushing ability that Kyler Murray brings to the QB position and brings to the fantasy position and your fantasy lineups. When you are selecting a quarterback, especially in a one quarterback league, you are shooting for upside. When you look at the dudes that can finish as the QB one, you are looking at the Jalen Hurts, the Josh Allens, the Mahomes, the dudes who can run the ball, the dudes who are sneaky, active on the ground, the Lamar Jacksons. That is how you get that ceiling. You could have a nice floor, but you can't really get to the ceiling in today's day and age without that rushing ability. Last year when he came back, he played the last eight games of the season, okay? He had a single game of fewer than 20 rushing yards, and in that game that he did not have 20 rushing yards, he scored a rushing touchdown. Now, the offense overall, this is a, a tweet from my friend Connor Allen over there at Connor Allen NFL on Twitter, the Arizona Cardinals offense with Kyler Murray last season, so weeks 10 plus, 10th in points per game, 9th in EPA per play, Ninth in total yards per game, seventh in points per drive, third in points per red zone drive. They added Marvin Harrison Jr., they added offensive tackle Jonah Williams and Evan Brown. So I'm excited for this Arizona Cardinals offense. I like what Gannon did last year. I thought they were a relatively creative offense, a team that fought, a team that played really well, that just didn't have the pieces in place. And now I think they do have the pieces in place to be like a really nice surprise dark horse team that at least puts up a lot of points because I think their defense is going to be borderline abysmal which means they're going to have to put up a lot of points to stay in games with the Rams, the Niners, the Seahawks, okay? So Kyler Murray is like the easiest upside pick in that middle round if you faded the top elite quarterbacks. And one of those quarterbacks who is also on this list, the next player we're going to talk about is Anthony Richardson of the Indianapolis Colts. So probably the two most exciting quarterbacks in fantasy football this year are Kyler Murray and Anthony Richardson. Anthony Richardson, if you want to pay up for him, you are paying a premium, all right? He is pretty much a fifth round pick. He is the consensus QB5, QB6 off the board in almost every platform. And I know people like to talk about Anthony Richardson's ceiling, which is what I'm going to do in a minute. Uh, but I'd also like to talk about his floor, okay? Because when you look at his objective situation, if you take Anthony Richardson out of the equation, this offense, I don't really think has a weakness. They have a top five offensive line. They have a really good running back and run game in Jonathan Taylor. They have three incredible separators at the wide receiver position in Michael Pittman, new rookie Adonai Mitchell, and Josh Downs, who just got hurt, obviously, four to six week timetable return from the high ankle sprain. So hopefully they let him rest. He'll come back week two, week three, be 100 percent and have that really, really well-rounded wide receiver room for Anthony Richardson. They have Shane Sykin, obviously running the offense there, comes over from Philly, who, you know, was there when they were running the tush push. They also ran the single fastest pace offense in the NFL last year, despite having Gardner Minshew operating it for 70% of the year. They ran the most plays, they ran the fastest pace, and that will be the same with a quarterback like Anthony Richardson under center. So when I look at the situation, when I look at the scheme, when I look at the pace, when I look at the weapons, when I look at the ground game, when I look at the offensive line, 
I don't see a lot of flaws in this offense. Obviously, they don't have like a real pass catcher of consequence at tight end. But when I'm looking at the tight end position, you got Jelani Woods, 6'7", 250, Mo Alley Cox, 250 plus. Just fucking put them on the offensive line and let them yak their their back out, all right? Let them be a sixth and seventh offensive lineman for Anthony Richardson. So that's just the quarterback situation for whoever is in Indy. We saw Gardner Minshew play really well in the situation last year. Now you throw in Anthony Richardson, and in the four games he played last year, right? We'll look at a uh, an article from Yahoo, which I will link down below. Fantasy points per drop back is one of the best future indicators of fantasy performance. And Richardson just recorded the most fantasy points per drop back since Lamar Jackson's historic 2019 fantasy season. Richardson averaged 29.2 fantasy points per four quarters as a rookie and matched C.J. Stroud in weekly top five finishes despite playing just 10 quarters. Richardson continued to show a strong ability to avoid sacks like he did in college and last year's full season rushing pace would have led all quarterbacks in rushing yards, rushing touchdowns, attempts, and designed runs. He easily paced the league and designed rush rate in the red zone and doesn't plan on changing his playing style in year two. Yeah, they're not going to change his style. They drafted him to be this player. If he gets injured, that is what they're going to have to live with. But you draft Anthony Richardson to let him be the athletic specimen that he is and I'm not sure I believe you guys are going to see the video maybe early next week but I just interviewed a beat reporter from Indianapolis and I was asking him like if you had to put money down who would you bet has more rushing touchdowns this year Anthony Richardson or Jonathan Taylor and he said because he probably has to project Richardson to miss a game or two uh he would probably if he had to put money down lean JT but if a rich plays the full season he would lean towards a rich, which is a pretty strong case given the fact that JT is probably projected to score 10, 11, 12 rushing touchdowns. But we can get a Cam Newton type of season out of a rich where he's scoring at least one rushing touchdown a game. He'll have games where he throws for two, scores one, has 70 yards on the ground, like insane weak winning upside here. So a rich in the fifth or sixth round, Kyler Murray in the seventh or eighth round. I think they're both phenomenal picks. If we move up a couple rounds and if we move over to a new position, we're looking at one of my next favorite players to draft. And if you want a list of all of my favorite players, just in general to draft for this upcoming fantasy football season, that is all available in our draft guide right now, which is live available for purchase on bdge.co. All right, bdge.co, you have our fantasy football draft guide, everything you need for your fantasy football draft to absolutely Dominate it, right? Must draft players, our entire fade list, all of our rankings, PPR, standard, half PPR, one quarterback, flex. It's got our round by round draft strategy for both one QB and super flex leagues. Got our tiebreaker matrix up in there. I know it's a little bit of a rocky start to the launch, but that is officially launched as well, which will have stats like offensive line rank, offensive pace, uh, fantasy playoff strength of schedule that you can compare between players. So that's live right now on bdg.co at full price. However, the least expensive way to get it, the cheapest way to get it is by going through the Underdog Fantasy app, okay? So if you download the Underdog Fantasy app as a first-time depositor and you put just $10 on there with our code BDGE, you're not only going to get a deposit bonus up to $250, depending on how much you deposit, but you're going to get a free square for week one of Lamar Jackson's passing yards at 0.5 yards. So a fucking free win on the app. Plus you're going to get the draft guide email to you absolutely free. We get the emails each day at 3 PM. They'll go out about an hour after that. So those who purchase within the last 24 hours, 3 PM, 3 30 PM, 4 PM, something around there. That's when you'll get the email for the draft guide, but underdog fantasy code BDGE will tell you all about Kyler Murray. will tell you all about Anthony Richardson. It will tell you all about this man's name, James Cook as well. When I look at James Cook, he is one of my favorite value picks that I think we are not factoring in upside for him right now. He is depending on what platform again, like on Yahoo, he's a fourth round pick on underdog. He's a fifth round pick, but what gets me most excited and what should get everybody most excited is the fact that we have Joe Brady now the full-time offensive coordinator in Buffalo. And we all remember when he took over week 11 through the rest of the season, this offense started to run through James Cook. If you look at the splits on the left side of the screen versus the right side, the in-split column is those last seven games of the season when the offense was run through Joe Brady. He saw almost a full target more per game. He saw almost five rushing attempts more per game. The yardage was up. The touchdowns were up. And I think that is where I get most excited because now you look at the makeup of this Buffalo Bills offense. They obviously lose Stephon Diggs. They lose Gabriel Davis. They have the single most vacated air yards going into the year, the second most overall targets leaving their team going into the year, and the third highest percentage of targets inside the 10-yard line. So with Josh Allen's top two targets gone, there is so much more opportunity for James Cook to get more involved in this offense. During that span, the last eight weeks of the season, James Cook ranked second in running back targets in the red zone behind only Christian McCaffrey, and he tied for the most end zone targets. Now, he also led the league in drops, running backs, which 
I think for a back that's really good in the passing game tends to be uncharacteristic, and I do not consider drops year over year to be a sticky statistic. So bad year this year, if he has a little bit more luck and has a good year, if you remember watching him, the amount of like fantasy points he left on the field from a receiving perspective, he would run wheel routes and just drop balls that were in his bucket. Now you could say like, that's, that's a problem. That is a problem for a player that we are uh, depending on to have a big pass catching role and to have a lot of fantasy points through that pass catching role, that could be a problem. I'd like to think that he's talented enough and athletic enough to kind of fix that problem. If he doesn't drop those balls, we are probably drafting him as like a top eight running back this year. Because when you look at this tweet from at pro underscore ants, James Cook's receiving ranks among 46 running backs in 2023 with at least 30 targets, fourth in EPA, fourth in EPA per target, second in po positive play percentage, second in yards per target, second in yards per reception, seventh in yards per hour run, eighth in yards, tied for fourth in touchdowns, tied for 17th in receptions. And that's the only real volume stat here. Third in QB rating when targeted, tied for 17th in receptions. Like that's the volume stat here. And with Diggs and Davis gone, the volume is going up there for Cook. So I think there's a lot of meat left on the bone. I think when you look at the pecking order of this offense, it's going to be James Cook and Dalton Kincaid, and then whoever emerges. Maybe it's Keon Coleman. Maybe it's Quill Shakir. Maybe it's Curtis Samuel. No one that scares me enough. No one that I think is going to come in and command 130 targets off the rip. So I think James Cook will average legitimately five targets a game, probably catch 65 plus passes this year. It's the reason why in full PPR, we have him ranked above guys like Derrick Henry and Josh Jacobs in our draft guide right now. He's not above them in standard or half PPR, but in full PPR, I'm taking James Cook above those guys. And he did all this last year. He was a top 10 fantasy back with Diggs and Davis there. And he only scored two rushing touchdowns. Okay. And I'm not projecting him to have a big goal line role. I, I, I don't know if I'd project him to have more than like three or four uh, going into this year on the ground. But who knows if things break right and they do give him more goal line carries, he scores four or five rushing touchdowns along with probably the three to five we could project through the air plus 70 catches. I think we're in for a monster underrated year for James Cook. Now, the next player might be the player I am most excited to talk about on this list because he has gotten so little love this offseason. People are bored of him. But here's the deal. If Jaden Daniels is good, Terry McLaurin is going to go bonkers this year. Curtis Samuel is gone. They don't have a real wide receiver three. And I would say that you could argue they don't have a real NFL wide receiver two because Jahan Dotson might stink. He was okay as a rookie. His numbers were inflated because he scored a lot of touchdowns, but his per route metrics, his per target metrics, each of the last two seasons, despite being a good separator at Penn State, despite the first round capital, he has not been good as an NFL wide receiver. So I'm looking at target competition in Washington. It's been as weak as it's ever been for Terry McLaurin. The last four years, this is where Terry McLaurin ranks in terms of catchable target rate. So the percentage of his targets that were catchable last four years, 76th last year, 70th in 2022, 70th in 2021, 77th in 2020, all per playerprofiler.com. He has been top 12 in unrealized air yards for four straight seasons. So the amount of air yards that he's gotten that have not resulted in catches, probably because they're terrible targets, four straight seasons of being top 12 among wide receivers in those cumulative air yards, despite being that terribly ranked in unrealized air yards and catchable target rate, he has gone over a thousand yards in all four of those seasons. When we look at Jaden Daniels coming in, I have no idea if he's going to be good. He's not a guy that I'm targeting in fantasy football, despite his rushing upside, despite how good he played last year. But if there is a strength to his game outside of the rushing ability, it is him throwing the fucking ball deep. He was the Heisman Trophy winner last year. He led the NCAA in yards per attempt, had a 22 to 0 touchdown to interception ratio on deep passes. So passes that were 20 or plus, 20 or more yards in the air, his touchdown to interception ratio was 22 to 0. He led the country with a 69.1 deep adjusted completion rate. When you look at his numbers, he is just, everything was really good last year. So I don't see a reason why, if he's good, right? If these numbers mean something and Jane Daniels is just above average, which would be a huge step up from a guy like Sam Howell, who put up fantasy stats because he was running a little bit and chucking the ball a million times, but he's not an accurate quarterback whatsoever. There's no reason that Terry McLaurin cannot be this year's DJ Moore. And last offseason, I predicted DJ Moore to be 
last year's Amari Cooper. So we are doubling down and doing that again. And on that note, similar to how the Bears defense started out the year, a lot of production for DJ Moore is because they had to throw the ball so damn much. The commander's defense is going to be atrocious, likely one of, if not the worst unit in the league. They're not going to be able to establish any sort of run. So all I'm saying is that we should like Terry McLaurin a lot more because guess what? If Jaden Daniels is good, Terry's probably popping for like 1,385 catches. All right. And the last player up on this list, before I get to number five, if you've enjoyed the video, just subscribe to the channel, please. Don't make me say it again. Don't make me beg you to put the D in the subscribe button. It's right below, and it'll start to show you all of my videos. So if you enjoyed this, I put videos out like this, this amount of research, these types of numbers, literally every single day throughout all of August and September and into the season. So again, if you're new here, subscribe to the channel. Hit the button that looks like this underneath it go cop the draft guide via underdog fantasy and let's talk a little bit about kenneth walker the running back for seattle he's another one that's kind of going under the radar where i don't hear a lot of love about kenneth walker because we're all drafting the exciting players you know devon a chan and and isaiah, isaiah pacheco who i love both of them third round uh you know late second early third round and then when we get to like the fourth fifth round we're talking about the jacobs is the joe mixins but i don't hear a lot about kenneth walker and i get it their offensive line is bad he's coming off of a an injured season again for the second year in a row but if you own kenneth walker i'm gonna be honest with you gut had to remind me of this last year i forgot how good kenneth walker was before he got hurt if you look at the first six weeks of the season last year kenneth walker was averaging almost 17 and a half ppr points per game he was incredible on the ground and let's not forget just how incredible of an athlete he is this dude is 5'9 211 ran a 438 one of the best speed scores we've ever seen at the combine and then just looking at his ground efficiency metrics in both seasons that he's played in the NFL like his breakaway run rate number eight overall his juke rate which is just his elusiveness rating is top 12 and those numbers were even better last year. Juke rate number two, evaded tackles overall number three, breakaway runs top 15. Like he was really, really good. And then we're hearing Ryan Grubb come on and just absolutely fucking gush over this dude. Said, I think he gets better every single day. I think the sky's the limit for him. I think he's a really, really talented, powerful back that's a true three tool guy. He's electric out of the backfield as a pass catcher, which is great to hear because that is not why we really draft him in fantasy. He's not a super strong pass catcher. He hasn't had the chance to prove that, but maybe he does with Ryan Grubb, and that would. Kenneth Walker having a real three down roll. That's exciting. That is a six round pick that I can get behind. And like I said, their offensive line might be bad. It, it, it might be not not great. Uh, they did just sign Connor Williams, though, and Connor Williams was one of the best run blocking linemen for the Miami Dolphins last year. So I think that is a nice upgrade to the interior. And with running backs, you're always looking for interior upgrades on the offensive line. All right. If you want to upgrade your fantasy season, your fantasy drafts, again, the draft guide is available on BDGE.com. CO or the cheapest way through underdog fantasy download the app it'll be linked right below in the notes of this episode use promo code BDGE when you deposit ten dollars or more for the first time and you'll get it emailed to you that same day or 3 p.m the next day if you do it at night but regardless we love you I love you I'm out of here smoochies